my story basically began, I was uh, raised in a bit of a traumatic household and I had dealt with some fatigue as a youngster and was uh, diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome in like middle school at some point. Um, and I recall actually to this day, the Golden Girls episode where B. Arthur gets diagnosed with chronic fatigue is still my favorite. Um, it's mostly because she was dismissed by the medical community. Um, and that always resonated with me, always. Um, and I just love B. Arthur. Uh, by the time I got to high school, I was really, in hindsight, very depressed. I was suicidal. It was bad. Um, I was cutting myself regularly. I didn't know where I picked that up. Uh, I didn't know anyone else who did it. And I kept it a secret until I was found out. I, I was then a, a kleptomaniac. Literally every day I had to steal something. I uh, then discovered, well, I discovered drinking earlier than that. But I, by 10th, 11th grade, I was drinking regularly and drinking hard. And drinking to escape myself. Um, I didn't like that. I didn't like that about myself. Growing up, I enjoyed being surrounded by love and being involved with love and yummy things that made me feel good and made other people feel good. Actually, when I was little, I wanted to be a psychic so I could help people find their loved ones. And that was what I wanted to be. I always wanted to help people. And then when my addictions took over and the depression, the light was just dimming and dimming and dimming. Um, and I hated that. Uh, by the time I was 25, I was full blown alcoholic. Um, it was difficult to, to, to get on, but I did, I had a good job. I, you know, I got dressed for work. I was took care of myself in that way, but everything on the outside always had to look good no matter if the inside was crumbling. And that's exactly what was happening. Um, keep up the outside appearances. That could be a cultural thing, I don't know. I am first generation Ukrainian. My diet growing up was hideous. We grew up eating grandma's pierogies. She lived in the back and she loved to cook for her grandkids. I loved to eat it. And, um, but we, we really kept things a secret and how you felt inside never mattered. Um, it was always how it looked on the outside to others. And my life was always like trying to fit a square peg into a round hole and construct a life that I thought was appropriate to others, no matter how I felt inside. I um, moved to Manhattan in 2002 and came down with this debilitating fatigue. And I was so concerned because my busy season at work was coming. So I went to my doctor who I loved and we did a, took a battery of tests. I was convinced I had mono. After a couple of uh, rounds of tests, he said, you don't, there's nothing wrong with you. Eventually he said, you have depression. And of course I didn't tell him how much I was drinking. Um, you have depression, you need to go on medication. So he put me on the star D trial uh, for Celexa. I was on apparently a very high dose. Um, that knocked me out. I wish I had journals, but I didn't. Uh, now drinking on that medication took things in a whole different way. Um, it, my life was extremely dangerous at that point. The blackouts were absolutely horrific and the situations I was coming to in were dangerous to say the least. Um, I credit the angels. I got sober March 12th, 2005, and that began a journey for me, a journey of healing. And I really delved into the whole program and the community of the sobriety community, and it woke me up and it helped me to, to believe again. And I was starting to uh, come out of this darkness. And um, But as time went on, I was developing severe brain fog and my doctor and I, I was going to see a pharma, pharmacologist and she changed my medication many, many times. We would just switch from one to another and I didn't think anything of it. She was the one in charge. She even put me on an anti-narcoleptic medication once to see because I was just so tired. So it was like I was sleeping my life away. Like, what did I get sober for? I didn't get sober to sleep the rest of my life. And the brain fog was getting worse. And of course, when you can't function physically, the emotional starts to crumble more again. 
um, I, I did a lot of different therapies. I did a lot of different treatments. I reached out to a lot of alternative healing and some of it was very useful. I did uh, finally move to California, which was a dream I'm back in New York, by the way. Um, but there I found a spiritual practice that really resonated with me and it was based on science and how our body works. And I found my tribe. It was the first time I actually had a tribe and I understood what community meant and uh, the importance of that. But I came back to New York and the I knew that I had to get off these meds. I just could not understand how, but I knew the key was to the food I was putting inside of me. Um, and I knew gluten was a problem, but I just couldn't kick it. I mean, I had kicked, at this point, I had kicked alcohol, cigarettes, drugs, shitty guys. I just could not get rid of the gluten. I was okay with the dairy, the gluten and the sugar. Couldn't get rid of it. That's when I found this. And um, the teachings were very strategic and it taught me wh why I am not a broken person. I am not going to be sick for the rest of my life. I'm not even sick. I just have this, this, these allergies in my body and my digestive system was way off. And I loved the protocol. I loved meeting all of the people all over the world and being on that community. And I really felt empowered. And each day that went, I felt stronger and stronger. And I really started to see results. Yeah, I still dealt with fatigue for quite some time after. Um, but the brain fog lifted. If the brain fog lifts, then I feel like I have a chance. Because like, if I'm not even thinking straight, I can't do anything. So the brain fog lifted, um, and um, that was tremendous. I hope that it reaches at least one person out there to know that you don't have to live in the shame of the stigma of depression, and you're never alone. You're not alone. You have choices. You have choices, even if it feels like you don't. And even though it feels like that light has dimmed inside of you, please know that it's still there. It is, it's just hard to see sometimes, but let us help you. Let help come in and pull you out back into the light because you can do this. If I can do this, then and we could all do this. And what we can't do alone, we do together. And again, I'm very grateful to this group and Dr. Brogan for writing her book and establishing the Vital Mind Reset community for us. I've created wonderful friendships that I'll have for the rest of my life, and I'm looking forward to making more. And I thank you for taking this time to be with me today. Thank you.